In this video, we'll take a closer look at the higher level content from A4.2 on evolution and speciation. In order for speciation to occur, um, two groups must be reproductively isolated, and that can happen in one of two ways. That isolation can either be allopatric, which means I'm going to have some kind of a physical barrier that separates two populations. You may have also heard this referred to as geographic isolation. Um, so examples would include like a mountain range or a river or a lava flow separating two groups. Or in the example of the Galapagos tortoise, we're looking at the water in between different islands in the Galapagos separating two groups um, and then leading to speciation. That is allopatric speciation. Sympatric speciation does not involve a physical barrier. Okay, so that's going to cause a separation between two populations, um, but not physically, right? So that can either be temporal isolation, which is when things happen at a different time. So that's where we get this word tempo from. Um, great example here would be like organisms like the winter processionary moth that breed at different times. If you breed at different times, then you're not breeding together, and eventually that could lead to speciation due to the reproductive isolation. Or sympatric uh, speciation could be behavioral, so there could be some kind of behavior that's separating two groups. A lot of times this is going to involve different mating rituals, um, or in this example of the cichlid fish, um, maybe preferring different levels of water or depths of water, um, and that behavior is likely to attract different mates, but they're not mating together. So the whole point here is understanding you must have reproductive isolation, but that reproductive isolation can either be caused by something physical or something that's not physical. So let's travel back to the Galapagos Islands for just a moment and talk about Darwin's finches. So Darwin's finches, that's an example I would definitely have in my memory tool bank. Um, this is a great example of a common ancestor. So we think there was a common ancestor that maybe flew in from the South American mainland and landed on all of the different Galapagos Islands. Different islands had different food sources, okay? And those different food sources were easier to um, utilize for birds with different variations in their beaks. And so over time, that common ancestor evolved into several different species. One of the main differences being the shape of the beak. And of course, the shape of that beak was driven by the different food sources on different islands. This is what we call adaptive radiation, a common ancestor diverging into several different species due to different variations exploiting different ecological niches, okay? So in this case, the ecological niche would have been the food source and the different variations would have been the different variations of the beak, okay? But um, a wonderful example here of adaptive radiation. There are many, but this is probably the one uh, that I would remember. Now, speciation is going to produce different species, but what prevents those species from merging back together? Well, when species kind of merge together, we call this interspecific hybridization. Inter meaning between, okay? So between two different species, can I make a hybrid? So breeding between two different species is something that's common with domesticated plants and animals to produce new varieties. So if I want a new variety of apple, I might try to breed two species together. However, when we do this, most of these hybrids, if they're truly different species, are going to produce sterile offspring. Remember that the very definition of a species is being able to produce fertile offspring. If you are breeding together different species, they may be able to produce an offspring, but it's sterile. And so this, again, happens a lot in the domesticated plant and animal world, but not in nature, because in nature, it would be a waste of time and energy to mate with something only to have offspring that cannot reproduce on your own. And so this is why things like mating rituals and courtship behaviors are very important. Um, it helps to maintain species diversity. So for example, a lion and a tiger can 
can reproduce and form a liger. Yes, that's real, but ligers are sterile, okay? So lions and tigers over time have developed different courtship rituals, okay? And it's really important that they maintain those. Without those kinds of courtship rituals and um, reproductive isolation, those species would merge back together. When species merge back together, so do their genes. And so we see a much more homogenous gene pool. All of these different variations in mating rituals and the like helps to maintain species biodiversity. It helps preventing these things from coming back together. It takes a long period of time, many generations, for reproductive isolation to lead to new and distinct species. But there are some cases where that speciation process can be very abrupt, meaning that it happens all of a sudden. So hybridization we've already talked about, right? Taking different species and making new varieties. The other one I wanna take some time to talk about is something called polyploidy. So poly, that prefix, meaning many, okay? And ploid, referring to things like diploid, haploid, tetraploid, octaploid, these are all referring to chromosome numbers. So in a normal cell, your cells would be diploid, or in this case, let's talk about this banana. This normal banana is diploid. It has its chromosomes in homologous pairs, like one from each parent, so we say that it is 2N, more on that on another topic. Okay, sometimes errors result in cell division that make extra copies of all of the chromosomes. So instead of being 2N, okay, and having just two chromosomes or two of each chromosome, polyploidy plants can be 3N or 4N or 8N. Now, normally in things like humans, that would not result in a viable embryo, but in plants in particular, this results in um, a living uh, creature, okay? And a lot of our domesticated plants are actually polyploid. So it's really interesting because these polyploid plants tend to be bigger and juicier and tastier. And so farmers are actually selecting for those polyploid plants um, and cultivating them on purpose. Now remember, in order to be able to reproduce with something, you have to have the same chromosome number. Because this polyploid banana has a different chromosome than this regular diploid banana, they cannot reproduce with one another. And if they cannot reproduce with one another, that sounds a lot to me like we've formed a new species. Okay, so this is an example um, of abrupt or really fast um, speciation.